everyone, and welcome to the dark art of container monitoring. Uh, the talk will be as evil as the title. <laughs> um, quick introduction about me. I'm Gianluca. I work as a software engineer at Sysdig, and I'm a core developer of the open source troubleshooting tool Sysdig. Uh, as you can see, we are very original at Sysdig when it comes to names. Um, let's introduce the problem of today. Uh, containers are great, right? Why we like them? Some of the reasons why we like them is because they are isolated, self-contained, simple, and lightweight. These are all cool stuff. But for these exact same reasons, seeing inside containers is not easy at all. So when you are in your nice containerized infrastructure and you need to monitor and troubleshoot it, uh, essentially you will, have, uh, you will face uh, big challenges that uh, with, with traditional infrastructure you don't have. So the entire talk essentially will uh, revolve around the question, can monitor and troubleshooting play nice with these properties? What we're going to talk about, essentially the rest of the talk is going to be a live overview of the monitor and troubleshooting options that you have. And we're going to focus on the most popular command line tools. Then I'm going to quickly go through some advanced namespaces tricks for gigs. And then we are going to focus on sysdig, which is the tool where I have the most expertise. Let's get started. For this talk, let's see, can you guys see this? OK. We are going to use, as a DEM infrastructure, a web application that is a distributed WordPress application made by seven containers, where I have four containers running the WordPress application. And they are running Apache, serving the PHP code itself. The persistent layer is achieved via MySQL container. There is then an entry point made by HAProxy that lives in another container and balances the traffic between the four WordPress containers. And finally, there is a client uh, container that essentially generates some HTTP traffic to keep the application alive. To prove you guys that I'm not cheating, the infrastructure is up and running. I can ping it from my browser. And uh, let's get started. What are some things that we are interested in monitoring? I'm going to focus on these five categories, which will cover 99% of what one is interested in. And we're going to focus on the resource usage, which is uh, an overview of how your system, your containers, and your processes are doing. Then uh, we're going to dig into network and file activity. Then we'll switch to system, containers, and processes errors. And then we'll take a look at some application level monitoring and troubleshooting. Let's pick the first item, resource usage. If I had to choose what is the first tool that I could use for doing general system troubleshooting at a higher level, my first choice will be top, right? So I can run top, and of course this resolution is low, but I can see all the, all the processes in my system, essentially a bunch of Apache processes with all the system resources they're consuming, CPU, memory, as well as the global resource usage for the machine. But this doesn't play very nice with containers because look here, I can look at the command line, but essentially I have a wall of Apache processes and I cannot easily see on which container these processes live. So if I have one Apache process that is consuming 100% of CPU, how do I know on which container I'm going to do Docker exec next and, and troubleshoot? I can add some fields to top, for example, one interesting one is the C groups. Essentially, the C groups are the Linux kernel facility that uh, Docker uses to group together all the processes in one container for resource control. And if I do this, I can see that a new column is added that contains essentially the C group name for each Apache processes. Now, the resolution is a bit low. But if you can see here, essentially, you can see that as you go through with the Apache processes, the C group changes. And this C group is nothing more than the container ID of the Docker container itself. So you can use this for filtering purposes and to decide what, what's next if one Apache process uh, starts misbehaving. Another thing that I cannot easily see with top is, of course, how my containers are doing. I cannot see the CPU and memory of, uh, uh, of 
each of my each of my containers because I'm just seeing the processes. Uh, and another thing that is difficult to spot is some uh, information that live inside containers. For example, here I just see the PID of the Apache processes uh, as seen outside the containers because I'm running top in my Linux VM. But I'm not seeing, for example, the internal PID as seen inside of the container, which is an information that you need to use if you need to do some intra-container uh, process communication. So, for doing these things, I can use some Docker-specific tool. As you've seen, with Docker PS, I can essentially see the list of my containers running along with their statuses. Uh, but, it, but we can do better than that. For example, with Docker stats, I can pass a bunch of container names. And now I get a real-time update of the system utilization per container. And uh, this is very useful because uh, not only it gives me a very good overview of how my containers are behaving, but also this is based on a nice REST API that one can uh, use in their own scripts uh, and monitoring tools to get uh, a greater level of visibility and do some custom actions. Once you see that one container is misbehaving, essentially, like say that is, that is this one, then I can zoom in into the container using uh, Docker top and I can do docker top WordPress 1. And this will show me all the processes. Well, let's see if we can get it better here. And this will show me all the processes that live inside this container. In this case, all the Apache processes. And the nice thing of this is that I can use, for example, a uh, PS-like syntax. So if I pass AUX, now I will see uh, not only the common line, but also the CPU usage and the memory usage of uh, all the processes in the container. So overall, this is a pretty nice workflow to uh, get information about the uh, overview of your containers and processes in the system. The next item in the list were the network connections. I'm a big fan of monitoring network connections. I do it as often as I can. And uh, the program that comes at the beginning, to my mind, when monitoring connection is netstat, right? I can do netstat, and this will show me all the TCP connections that are happening in my system. But I immediately see that here I, I can just see one connection, which is one connection on port 22. So it's the SSH connection between my terminal and my Linux VM. All the connections that are happening with the Docker container, so the connection between WordPress and MySQL and HA proxy in WordPress, they don't show up here. So this is pretty bad. Why is it? This is because each container, of course, gets its own network namespace and its own network stack. So, so each container, from a network point of view, is completely isolated from the rest of the system. Each container gets its own network interfaces, its own network connections. And if I run netstat in the host, uh, essentially, I can just see the connections that live outside the containers in my host. And as I said, this is not good at all. The first thing that comes to my mind to solve this problem is, uh, well, I could run netstat inside the Docker container, right? So say that I'm interested in the connections for the MySQL container. I can do a Docker exec and execute essentially a bash shell inside the MySQL container and run netstat. But oops, I get command not found. Why? Because containers, according to the previous slide, are simple and lightweight. The, the containers are not loaded with all your tool belt of monitoring tools that you might need. And installing all of them is usually considered an anti-pattern. In this case, I'm lucky because I have apt-get. So if I remember the name of the package that contains netstat, which I don't, uh, I could easily install it. But most of the time, this, this is not possible. For example, very recently, I've been seeing this movement where people really try to deploy very little containers, where uh, at their extreme is just a single statically linked Go application, and that's the entire file system of the container. If you're lucky, there's a busy box runtime to bootstrap. But otherwise, sometimes you just see a single application, and, and it actually works. And in those cases, good luck installing netstat with a package manager or something. There's really nothing at all you can do. So uh, one possibility might be making a sort of Frankenstein monster, where essentially say, I have netstat, the executable in my host. And what if I could run netstat 
against the network namespace of a container that I'm interested in monitoring. This is actually possible, for example, using the system utility that is called NSEnter. This is a system tool that allows you to run a program inside the namespace of another process. This is advanced, but it's also uh, pretty cool. So say that I want to see the connections of my MySQL container. So first I'm going to grab the PID of MySQL, which is 3796. And then I'm going to do NSEnter, specifying as a target PID 3796, and saying enter the network namespace. And then I'm doing netstat slash nt. And now I'm seeing all the connections. So uh, this is pretty cool. I'm able to see, of course, that MySQL is having a bunch of connections on port 3306 from all the WordPress containers. Still not ideal because uh, I had essentially to uh, uh, do this for each container that I want to see the connections. I still don't have a tool that shows me an overall list of all the connections in my system. But overall, you agree with me that this NSenter workflow is horrible, right? You don't want to do that in production. You go crazy. So as a next step, I want to show you what we did to essentially uh, tackle this problem with SysDig. SysDig is this uh, uh, fairly young open source system troubleshooting tool. And you can think of it essentially as a mix of S-Trace, TCP dump, LSOF with some Lua scripting. Uh, in its simplest form, SysDig allows you to capture a bunch of system events, and I'll define in a second what I mean by system events. And then it allows you to filter them in a very smart way, and it allows you to run very useful scripts on them that are written in Lua and that we call chisels. And uh, most important, the most relevant thing to this talk is that is a is a troubleshooting tool that has native support for containers. It was designed from day one with support for containers. How does it work? Uh, essentially, this is the typical architecture of your uh, host running containers, right? So you have a single instance of the kernel, and then you have a bunch of applications running outside the container, and then you have uh, all the containers with their applications running inside. SysDig works by shipping a little kernel module that intercepts all the activity between applications and kernel. These interactions are 99.9% .9 of the time system calls. So very, very, very rich information close to your code. And uh, by capturing all this information, this is then analyzed by the SysDig application inside user space. And the nice thing about the SysDig application is that it's designed to work outside a container as a normal system tool like we've seen top Nestat, but it can also run in a separate privileged Docker container that can inspect the activity of all the other containers in the system by passively monitoring their system call activity. So this plays very nice with the principle that we have seen before, uh, isolation, uh, self-contained and all that. So this doesn't fight your workflow, even if you run your containers on bare bone distributions such as CoreOS or whatever you're using for Docker machine that they don't even have a package manager, right? And uh, let's see how this works. Essentially in its simplest invocation, as I said, SysDig is just, will just print me on screen all the system events that are happening in my system. So this is hardly useful. Um, but as I said, one of the first things that I can do is using filters. With dash L, I can essentially see all the filters that SysDig support, and I can essentially filter a dozen of filters about file types, about uh, uh, process attributes, or about uh, event types. For example, let's run SysDig with this filter, process.name equal to MySQLD. And now we see that the output starts getting a little bit more interesting because now I see all these system events just related to SysDig, uh, sorry, just, just related to MySQL. In fact, I see the process name and I see the container ID and the container name where these events are generated. So this is what I meant by native support for containers. And uh, if you don't like this flat list of output that at times it can be uh, very confusing, you can choose to run what I, what I called before chisel that are just Lua scripts and we have a huge collection of them. And this will essentially take the system events, 
will process them and will just emit a nicer output, which in this case, for example, is the file activity done on each container broken down by each file. So this is, for example, this is a very powerful uh, metric that uh, falls into the bucket of file activity on my uh, previous list. So with this in mind, I want to quick, quickly go over uh, how you would address those five points with uh, a system troubleshooting tool like SysDig designed for containers. Let's start with the first one. The first one was uh, resource overview. I'm going to use SysDig, which is just a nice curses UI for SysDig. And when I run it, I see an output that is very similar essentially to top or even better HTOP if you're familiar with it. But what is important to see is there are two differences. One, now I'm not only seeing the processes, but I'm seeing also the containers where these uh, processes are living. So here I have the immediate information of what container I need to look for if I'm looking for trouble. And I can filter on that. For example, I can do WordPress 4, and now I just see the, the processes on the WordPress 4 container. Uh, and another thing that is very interesting is that we don't, all, we don't show only the PID of the processes, but also the internal PID, which we call the virtual PID. Uh, so this is the PID that you will see inside the containers if, for example, you are logging it somewhere, or if you are doing Docker exec and you need to send a signal to it. So this we thought it was a pretty useful information. Uh, let's iterate uh, to, the, uh, to what was uh, the next item in the list, which was the connections. How would you see the connection in SysDig? By pressing F2, essentially, I can switch view and I can change from the processes view to a bunch of other predefined and customizable views that address pretty much all, all sort of uh, areas that you might, might be interested in troubleshooting. For example, with connections, now I see the connections pretty much like in the Nestat output, but notice here, if I scroll horizontally, now I see also on which container they are made and for which process they are made. So finally, I have an output that passively, by sitting in a separate container, shows me all the connections that are happening inside my host, regardless of the container. And this is a very useful pattern because then you have all these columns, for example, bytes in or bytes out, and you can, and you can sort them uh, so that you can just see what you're interested in. And of course, you can filter. For example, you can say filter by HA proxy. So you can just see the connection that HA proxy doing, is doing, which in this case is a bunch of connections to port 80 of all the other WordPress containers. And uh, so this is essentially how you will go on troubleshooting network connections uh, with a container-centric tool. Then, as I said, I'm going to repeat myself, but containers are first-class citizens uh, in this tool. So if I want to, for example, open another view and look at containers, now I get an output that is pretty similar to the Docker stats one, where I see each container along with its metadata, and uh, I see uh, an overview of all the activity that, that it's doing in terms of network, in terms of CPU, in terms of file activity. and uh, the good thing is that I can, for example, click on one, say HA proxy, and uh, I'm brought it into this view where I just see the processes for this container, which in this case there are two. One is this Python script, which is the entry point because it has VP1, and then there is the HA proxy uh, application itself that does, of course, all the business logic. More. I can see here that HA proxy is doing a bunch of network activity. And uh, as I've seen before, these are all the connections coming from my client and going to WordPress and all that. But wouldn't it be cool if I could see what's happening inside those network connections? Uh, something like people will do with Wireshark or TCP dump, right? And for this, we have this echo mode that you can enable by pressing F5. It comes very handy. And by doing this, we can essentially see all the I.O. buffers exchanged by the HA proxy application. Let's format it in a nicer way. And now I can see a more user-friendly uh, view that I can pause. And let's look, for example, for something interesting, like get underscore and here. And now this is, for example, an isolation of uh, an entire HTTP request where I have 
one host, dot zero, dot seven, that is asking to HA proxy this HTTP request, get slash. And then I have HA proxy that is reading the request and it's forwarding it. In fact, we can see from the HTTP header x forwarded for dot zero, dot seven. It's forwarding it on behalf of my client. It's forwarding it to the WordPress containers. And then it will get the HTTP response and then it will forward it towards again my client. So considering that this is all pretty passive and it's from a separate container, uh, it's pretty cool and can become very handy when you need to do some real production troubleshooting. Uh, the next item in the list were the files activity. So not surprisingly for this we have a files view that will show me for each container and for each file which are the files that are being opened, written, or read the most. All these, again, by passively monitoring in a separate container. And for example, let's sort by bytes out to see what are the files that are being written the most. And I can see that it seems that pretty much all the WordPress containers are doing a fair constant amount of writes to access.log, the Apache log file, right? And once again, I can use the F5 echo mode to see what is actually being written in real time inside the access.log containers from the host or from a separate container. So I like to think of this as a tail command for Unix, but it works uh, everywhere and without doing Docker exec or anything. From a, from a central location, I can inspect whatever is happening. And of course, these files, these files don't exist in the host uh, because if, if, if I just quit now CCD and I go look for this file, it doesn't exist. This is in the, this is in the mount namespace of the container, so it's in the separate file system of the container. Um, the next item in the list were the errors. Sometimes it's good to see system and processes errors. So also for this, we have a view, again, container centric, which is a, a containers error that will show me all the errors categorized by file and network and memory errors for all my containers. So I can sort by file, and I can see that the WordPress containers have a bunch of file errors. So I can zoom in with enter. And now I brought into a view that is showing me the error codes that this container is generating, which is pretty cool. And uh, the most frequent errors seem to be this E no ent, which if you have done some low level C programming, it just means uh, uh, no such file or directory. Let's dig more into this error. We have this uh, uh, nice mode called F6 dig, and by digging into it, I'm brought to the sysdig events that are generating this error. So in this case, I can see that is the WordPress tree, obviously, the Apache process that is trying to open these files, the .htaccess file, pretty much everywhere in the, in the directory that is supposed to contain the static assets. So in this case, this is expected because Apache is supposed to be doing that. But again, using this workflow, uh, you might catch some pretty nasty things uh, and not always being this lucky. Um, the last item in the list was the application level activity. We have already seen a little bit of that with the uh, F5 echo mode, but it can get more interesting. And for this, I want to introduce you one more feature. Um, if I want, I can not only see the live system events as they are happening in the system, but I can choose, for example, with this command line to save them on a trace file that is completely self-contained and can be analyzed offline at a later time. And this is a workflow that is borrowed from the TCP dump and Wireshark world. And it's proven, it's very effective. And once I have this, I can read it back and, or even better, I can use sysdig and I get the same experience that I was getting in real time, but on the trace file. I can switch to the container view, I can select one container, I can select F5 and see all the activity, and this is all stored in the trace file. Uh, this is a very powerful workflow because it means that you can capture an uh, anomalous situation in production and then uh, share it with your coworker or analyze it offline, keep it for your records. Uh, uh, it can become very handy. Um, and I want to use this, this trace file to show you the last example of application level activity. Uh, one of the things that I like to see sysdig as is a grep for your entire system. 
For example, look at this command line where I'm reading my trace file using as a filter hido buffer contains 404 not found. So here I'm saying to sysdig, OK, show me all the system events that did some I.O. content that contained 404 not found. By doing this, well, now the resolution is a bit low, but I can see that uh, very often the WordPress 4 container in the Apache process generated a bunch of HTTP 404 not found responses. So what if I want to see more of this to do application level troubleshooting? I can choose to not see the flat list of event, but uh, use the echo file descriptor chisel, for example. They will show me the IO buffers exchange in a user-friendly way. And here, in fact, I can see the full HTTP response done on these connections. What if I can look more at what happened at the application level and see, for example, the matching HTTP response? I can just take this uh, TCP connection and filter on it. So the port was 45335. And uh, so I can uh, run again the echo file descriptor chisel using as port 535. And uh, now I get the full connection with the HTTP request. So we can see that at some point, uh, HA proxy uh, forwarded on behalf of my client the non-existent request, which not surprisingly failed, which was then forwarded to one of the WordPress containers. And we got as a response uh, HTTP 404 not found. So again, this is just an example of how you can do, from a completely separate container, application level troubleshooting. Um, this is pretty much all the things that I wanted to show. Uh, there is one more thing. Uh, we, we, we have been playing a lot at SysDig with the system events. And we found out that essentially uh, it's cool if you look them at the host level, but it's even cooler if you correlate them on a cluster level. So what happens if you, f if you fetch all the system events from multiple hosts and then you mix them together in a central location for doing some cool visualization? And for this, I want to show you part of our software as a service monitoring troubleshooting tool, which is the cloud. Uh, with this tool essentially here, just by looking at the, at the system events, we are tracing a complete topological map of a fairly complicated, but not, not that much, infrastructure. And here we are seeing essentially clusters, where clusters are group of hosts that semantically behave the same. And I can see how they are correlated. And I can zoom in in one cluster to see the nodes that are uh, that are part of this cluster, along with their connection. And if I'm not happy, I can zoom into one host. For example, this one that seems red, I can zoom into one host and see a map of the containers of, the, uh, of just this host. And uh, this, if I zoom in a little bit more, you will see that it's essentially the same infrastructure that uh, I used on my laptop with the same container names because I use the same bootstrap script. And uh, essentially here I have a mini map inside the host. And if I'm not happy, I can zoom in inside each container and see the processes that are living in this container. So there was HA proxy with the Python in his script, the HA proxy, uh, of course, binary, and then all the Apache processes. And uh, all these, all this is created from the boring list of system events that you've seen at the beginning, because we see all the connections that are happening at the system call level between processes. And we are connecting, we are connecting essentially the processes. And we are also connecting processing, processes living on different machines. And as you can imagine, this is not completely easy to do because there's a bunch of IP tables crap going on when you expose ports. Uh, and, uh, but we managed to do it. And uh, so this is just an example that uh, if you have a lot of uh, meaningful data at your fingertips, uh, you can do some pretty cool shit if you want to play with it. Uh, and this is pretty much the end of what I wanted to show. I think I'm uh, out of time. But if there is probably a couple of questions, we can take them. Otherwise.
the question is if uh, sysd can stream in different outputs other than the system events. Uh, well, there are a couple of ways. One, we support JSON output. So you can essentially format this, these system events in JSON that you can parse as you want. Or it's also, if you look at the uh, open source project on GitHub, you'll see that it's made by a bunch of libraries. So you can just extract the uh, uh, one of the libraries that, that is used for event inspection, and you can hook it up in your framework as you please, and then you get a, a direct objects that you can play with your with your favorite programming language. So yeah, essentially, uh, the question is if we can see a uh, shared file system with containers. Well, uh, it depends on how you do the sharing. If you do just the simple Docker bind mounting or whatever, that's completely supported, completely 100% supported. And you will see everything. You will be able to group by directories and see it exactly as if it was part of the container. If you do share file system at the NFS level or something, that can become a little bit tricky because uh, some of the interaction of NFS is not handled completely just by system calls, but most of the stuff happens in kernel. Same thing with uh, uh, SIFs or Samba. Uh, but uh, you can have also pretty good level of visibility there. But with just the, just the most simple bind mounting, you are 100% covered. So. Uh, is this cluster available just for the cloud? At the moment, yes. Uh, this is part, essentially, we ship uh, a, little, uh, a, li a little plugin for SysDig that allows you to create a compact output that you can stream over the network to SysDig Cloud. And then this visualization is done there. So at this moment, this map is just part of our commercial product. Uh, but again, the, the data is there. So if you feel like doing the grant work and creating it yourself uh, and come up with a nice visualization, you can do it and please share it. OK. Uh, so. Uh, Talking about performance over Redo SysDig. Uh, essentially, the kernel module itself has been designed to be very, very, very uh, uh, gentle on system, system resources. It's used at this point by thousands of servers in production across the world, and no one has ever complained. Uh, so if you use it uh, with, the, with the kernel module installed, there's no variety of your application. But the SysDig application itself is a user space application that, as you can see, does a bunch of stuff. So the CPU usage of SysDig itself can, uh, can also become in the order of percentages of CPU of the system. But again, uh, then it's up to you creating a client that is more lightweight or something. But the kernel module itself doesn't affect the throughput of your application. It's, it's very well designed. So essentially, uh, SysDig at this moment doesn't have uh, protocol level visibility. So you can just see in plain text what is going on over your network, uh, over your network buffers, or over your file buffers. Uh, so it wouldn't be too easy to uh, see just isolate the HTTP requests or something. But that being said, uh, it's not too difficult either to write a chisel that uh, will work with CSysDig and with SysDig, on which you can write your little HTTP parser very easily. And then you will be able to essentially group by all the metrics or something. If you go on our, on our website, there are examples of how to create your own script. Uh, and it's very powerful because it will work in the command line, but also in CSysDig. So you can have this nice table where you can put URL, HTTP method. I, I, I take it back. I don't think it would be, it would be difficult at all. Yeah. You mean this one? Yeah. This one is completely real time. Now I'm seeing it as snapshot in the past, but I can click on go live and I'm seeing, see how the numbers are changing and how more nodes are appearing. This is updated every second with a, with a delay of a couple seconds. So uh, we, we don't stream to the network all the CSD system events because they will be potentially in the order of 100 megabytes per second. We have, as I said, we have a little plugin on top of CSD that summarizes this information in a very compact way and just ships over the network what it takes to compose this visualization, which is essentially, you can think of it as a table with all the network connections, processes, and stuff like that. And more, of course, magic stuff that allows you to, for example, circumvent the IP tables and all the crap. Yeah, 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 you, yeah, yeah. You can definitely, for example, I can choose to see the past couple hours and I will see how the infrastructure was for the past couple hours. I can zoom back and I can see how it was from 350 to uh, 550 today. Uh, it's, yeah, we have, we have, uh, yeah, we, uh, we got you pretty covered with the, with, uh, with this is the cloud. All right, I think I'm well, over, well past my time.
Thank you, everyone.